So today I wanted to look at kind of a uh, gotcha in Photoshop that I just recently discovered. Um, and uh, it may be something you already know. Uh, it wasn't something I was aware of, but um, I sure found out uh, in a hard way. So I thought I would, I would fill you in on what I found out about. It's using the export uh, feature in Photoshop for exporting JPEGs. So, um, which works great, but only for certain applications. So I want to show you what I mean. So let's let's dive in and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. I've got a folder of images opened up here and some images I took a couple years ago during the fall. This is how I normally would save uh, my print files uh, in Lightroom. So I've got my raw files here, obviously, but this one next to it is a TIFF file. This is the one I use for printing. I've got it color coded with green. Uh, I've got uh, two stars next to it. That's that's my print file. So normally how I would work with that print file, I would go ahead and open it in Photoshop to do some finishing touches to get it ready for print, which is primarily dropping my signature in, you know, sizing the image and dropping my signature in. So a right click, edit in and go over here, edit in Photoshop. And I want to edit the original. Now I've already got this open in Photoshop, but this is how I would, how I do it. So let's just go ahead and jump over to Photoshop and take a look at it. Okay. Here it is open up in Photoshop. And this is how it would normally look for me as a file I'm getting ready to print. So you can see in here in layers, I've got, I've dropped in my signature layer here and gotten that sized. Um, I haven't done all the sharpening and everything I'd normally do with that, but just for uh, the sake of this demo, this is basically what it would look like. So now I'm ready to export this file to print. So normally my printer, will take TIFF files. So I would just go and save as, I'd rename it, put it in the folder that I wanted to, to uh, go to the printer, and there you go. So when I work in the web for my website, I would do two different things. So uh, I would go under export and export as. So this is a great way to create thumbnails. Uh, this is a great way to create thumbnails um, for my website. Uh, I can export those files and they'll get converted to sRGB. They'll be resized to whatever, <clears throat> excuse me, size that I want. And that works fabulous for my web thumbnails. So here's how that would look here. Um, JPEG, I might bump the quality up from good to very good um, size, I would probably resize it there. You know, I might say my width is 1,200 pixels, um, and of course, it the metadata gets scrubbed and it converts to sRGB. So it looks great. Looks great for thumbnails there. So that works great. So now the other thing I was using this for, and kind of mistakenly, uh, so on my website, I can offer my limited edition prints. So those, uh, those I do myself from those TIFF files, from those, you know, from those files that I prep and get ready with my signature and resize it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's much more customized to that particular size. It's sharpened for that size. Uh, those are the best quality prints that I do. But on my website, I can also offer uh, uh, images that I use more for like for canvas, maybe cards, maybe smaller items, or it's less rigorous printing, but you know, it's a lower price point. Um, and my website has partnered with uh, a printer that can provide those products. And for that, I need to upload JPEGs. So the mistake I was making, and this is how I discovered it, was when I was exporting those files, I, was, I did the thumbnail and I figured, okay, well, I'll just do the full size right here as well. So for a full size printing image, I might bump the quality all the way up to the best. I'm going to leave the size at full size 
And instead of convert to RGB, I'm going to embed the color profile because this is a file for printing that's on my website. Uh, even though it's, it's seen as a JPEG there, it's the actual file they will be printing from instead of just a thumbnail of it. So embed color profile. So great. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. And I've got a little samples folder that I created to show you what I mean uh, about the challenges that happen with this. So uh, I've got it set up there, samples. And I'm going to call this, I've already actually done this before, but I'm going to go ahead and redo it just so you can see uh, what I'm talking about. So this is Wilson Peak, uh, this image. So uh, I've got dash E after it, meaning export. And I'm going to replace that other file just so I can show you again how this works. All right, takes a few moments and there we go. So now let's open up that file and see what it looks like. So here we are and there's Wilson Peak export. And you can see by the little preview there that something is not right. And if I open that up in Photoshop, let me resize that. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that that is not right. So that's what I ran into. Um, so there's actually a couple of different problems here, but the main one is using that export as. So even when I went in there and keep the embedded color profile, it still changes the colors. So now in this particular instance, I am using a color profile that is ProPhoto RGB, which has got the highest gamut of, of any a color profile and I like to edit in that. Um, so one of the workarounds that I tried is okay, okay, I need to convert this to Adobe RGB. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, so now that's in Adobe RGB. That should play better with JPEG. Let's try it again. Okay, so let's go to export and export as again. All right, so I did my thumbnail for the for the website. Now I want to do my full size printable file for my website as well. I'm going to go in there and embed color profile. So now that's going to be uh, Adobe, uh, Adobe uh, profile. So that should be fine, right? So let's go ahead and export that. And I'm going to come back here and Wilson Peak E, and I'll just put a two behind that. That's why I'll know how that one was so there we go all right so now let's take a look at that one all right so you can see by the preview it looks a lot better that should have solved it right let's go ahead and open it in photoshop and well it's better but there's the original there is the exported file that was converted to Adobe RGB and it's better but it's you know it's not nearly the garish color that we had there let's just go ahead and toss that one out but it's still it's lost a lot of the delicate colors down in here that I really like it's just the colors off um, so what what is going on so the best way to do it is really quite simple so you go under File and Save As. I'll show you this one first because this is actually not quite the right way to do it. Or it, it can work, but it takes a little more, uh, more steps. Okay, so I went under Save As. And let's go back to our Samples folder. And Wilson Peak. So we'll call this one Wilson Peak Save. So that'll be the dash S behind that. And I've got to make sure and change it to JPEG. But oh, oh, wow. So here's a here's the challenge with this one too. See the very limited menu options under, under the save when I save it, just save as. So JPEG 2000 is is the closest I can get to JPEG, but that's a JPF file. Now I can change that to JPG at the end of the file name. And I can, so there's a couple steps involved with that and I, that can work, but I'd rather not have all that 
kind of those extra steps in there. Um, so I really want to make the process as simple and straightforward as possible. So we'll cancel out of that. And instead, we'll go to save a copy. Now under save a copy, I'll do the same thing. I'll pick samples. Make sure it's a JPEG. So now you can see I have a much broader range of options in here. And I'm going to choose JPEG. And I am going to name it Wilson Peak S. And let's go ahead and save that. Everything looks good. Embed color profile, Adobe 98. I'm going to replace the file that I'd done previously and save it as a large JPEG file. So now let's open that one up and see how that looks. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that over to Photoshop and let's just take a quick look here. Okay, resize that. Okay, there's my TIFF file. There's the one I just saved. So now if I toggle back and forth, you can see they're just almost indistinguishable or really, really are indistinguishable. So that is, that's the quick and simple answer. Just don't use export if it's something that's going to go to print. And if you do save, use save a copy. And that way it makes it very easy to uh, to save that file as a JPEG. And that's it. I hope that's helpful for you. If you like this video, make sure and hit that like button. Make sure and subscribe. And uh, I really appreciate you giving me comments as well. Let me know what you think of it or what you'd like to know more about. But uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. If you're interested in learning more about photography, be sure to head on over to my website, caseychinphotography.com, and look under the Workshops tab. I've got links for online workshops, intermediate and advanced workshops, in-person workshops, and also a workshop interest questionnaire. Let me know what you're interested in learning more about. And when you enroll in one of my workshops, you'll also have access to my Facebook group, Casey Chin Photography Workshops. This Facebook group is designed for participants in my workshops. It's a place where you can share your images, get feedback from myself and others, and build community with other people who are passionate about and interested in photography.